What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Dynamics. So we got this problem here. We're shooting a projectile off a roof, and we're firing it at 150 meters a second at this angle, the 345 triangle. And then we see that it falls 150 meters below where we shot it from. And our goal is to find the distance r that it travels. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So when we're going to do this problem, we need to break it up into two steps. The first step is going to be how long it's going to take this projectile to hit the ground. If we know how long it takes a projectile to hit the ground, we can then find how far it travels, right? Because we're given the initial velocity and the angle that it's launched at, so we know how fast it's traveling in the x-direction. So let's go ahead and solve for that first, though. When we have a velocity and it's shot at an angle, we usually want to split it up into x and y components. So let's find vx first, vx, right? That's going to be v a times uh, the angle of the x. So we're given that that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and the x component of this is the 4 side. So if we want to find just the x side, we're going to take 4 fifths of that. So VA is 150, 4 fifths of 150 is 120, and then meters per second. So say we begin with VY, VY is going to be VA, but instead of 4 fifths, it's going to be 3 fifths, and that's going to become 90 meters per second. So we're given these two components, right? Now, we need to solve the problem. So let's start with vertical. We're gonna to try to see how long it takes to hit the ground. So let's start with that. So we're gonna use a kinematics equation, right? Let's start with this one. Y final is equal to Y initial plus velocity Y time plus one half gravity time squared. So let's go ahead and just plug in everything we know on this equation. So Y final, that's going to be our final position. This is going to be negative 150, right? Because we're starting here at zero and we're going to fall at 150. So it's going to be negative 150 is equal to y initial, zero, right? We're starting at the origin, so we're going to start at zero. Velocity y, we just calculate that. It's 90, so 90 t plus gravity is, so let's get rid of this one. Minus gravity is negative 9.81. I'm just going to go ahead and divide that by two to get 4.905 t squared. So let's move everything to the other side. So we're going to get 0, and then let's set it up in order. So it's going to be negative 4.905 t squared plus 90 t plus 150. And now you'll notice that we have something that we can plug into the quadratic equation, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Uh, so I'm not going to write that out. Um, actually, I guess I can. But yeah, let's just try it out. So t is going to be equal to negative b, so negative 90, plus or minus the square root of 90 squared minus 4 times a, negative 4.905, times c, 150, over 2a, to uh, negative 4.905. Okay, so if you solve this, you're going to get two numbers. One's going to be a negative number, one's going to be a positive number. Obviously, you can't have negative time. So we're just going to have the positive one. So t is equal to the positive, which is going to be 19.9 seconds. So here we go. We found how long it takes the ball to hit the ground. Now all we have to do is see how far it travels in that time. So now let's look at horizontal. Right, horizontal. So our equation is going to be the same equation, I suppose, we could use. Yep, so it's going to be... Uh, x final is equal to x initial plus uh, velocity x time, and then it's going to be the one half acceleration times squared. But in the x direction, we don't have any acceleration, right? We're not counting for wind resistance. There's no gravity in the x direction, so that's going to be zero. So we're just going to have this equation. So again, let's plug in what we know. x final is going to be r, right? That's the distance we're solving for. So x final is going to become r. x initial, we're starting at the origin, so it's zero. Velocity x, we calculate it to be 120. And then time, we just calculated 119.9, or 19.9. All right, so here we are. So all you have to do is plug those into your calculator, and you get r is equal to 2,390 meters. And that's your final answer. Yeah, so that's how you solve this kinematics problem. Uh, it's not too tricky, right? It's just about making sure to split it up in the x and y direction. So if you have any questions with kinematics problems, feel free to check out my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.